So as an organism, we have to adapt to changes all the time. If we change our diet, if we are in a stressful situation, if we're exposed to X-rays or UV rays or any other environmental change, uh, as an organism, we have to be able to, to, be able to adapt to these changes. And uh, when I started my postdoc, I was very much interested in understanding how we signal to genes, how we can turn genes on and off. And at the time, about 20 years ago, we started realizing that a lot of the mechanism through which this occurs is by placing specific modifications on histone proteins. Histone proteins are what folds our genome, our DNA, into a compact chromatin structure. And we knew these modifications exist, we knew, we knew more or less where they're placed, and we had a strong feeling, uh, coming from genetics, that these modifications are really important in order to determine how genes are turned on and off. I started asking myself, how are these modifications actually recognized? Could it be that, similar to other examples in the signaling field, that these flags, these modifications, are actually decoded, interpreted by proteins? And this is where um, my background, my personal background in biophysics, I think, um, came to play a quite important role. I was aware of um, calorimetry, of isothermal titration calorimetry, as a very powerful method of determining how proteins interact with their ligands. And I started using um, a predecessor to some of these machines that you see here, um, an ITC instrument that allowed us to measure and actually test whether modified histone proteins would actually interact with some of the proteins that we were studying. And specifically, I tested whether um, so-called bromonomates, these are globular protein modules of about 120 amino acids, whether and how these bromonomates actually recognized acetylated histones. And um, as we now appreciate, and this has now entered the textbooks, uh, we know that many bromodomain modules that are found in many uh, eukaryotic organisms, that these bromine domains specifically recognize acetylated histones. And I think the power of isothermal titration calorimetry really was not only that it gave us very high confidence that these interactions take place in vitro, but it also told us the stoichiometry, the, uh, not just the affinity with which these interactions take place, but also started to give us some insight into how many molecules actually recognize the protein. And specifically the proteins I was working with, um, the double bromodomains of the TAF1 protein, this pr protein has two bromodomains, and it turns out that when you have at least two lysines acetylated on a histone tail, you get a high affinity interaction. Whereas if only one bromodomain is functional, or if you only have one lysine acetylated, you got a much lower affinity value. So essentially, at the time, this was the first example, not only that bromodomains actually recognize and acetylated histone. Not only was this the first example showing that these chemical tags on histones are actually recognized by specific protein modules, it was also the first example showing us that where the modification takes place, the context, the distance between these two acetylated lysine matters, and therefore that this so-called histone code, as it was known at the time, could actually be decoded and interpreted in a functional manner. So um, ever since then, I think not just my team, but certainly many other labs in the world um, in this area of uh, epigenetics have started, has used very successfully calorimetry to determine these bimolecular interactions. Um, I would say that uh, if there is one technique that has really changed the field of epigenetics and maybe even engendered or allowed this field to become, uh, this is it. So this has been a very powerful instrument that um, pioneered many of the much of the molecular understanding um, in the field of epigenetics, and it continues to be a, a workhorse of uh, my team's research and of the research of many other labs um, around the world. Thank you for listening. For more information, please visit www.malvin.com.